Hello to my South Indian configuration. Um, now I want to use the new features of ProCloud Server that enables uh, some web capabilities of um, Enterprise Architect, meaning WebEA. WebEA um, is already copied um, to my server and I have prepared in the last session that I have some uh, files there on my local disk, inetbub, we have this www root and there is some web EA inside. Um, if you want to have it as a root, then it's easy because you can just copy that. Say so control A, everything, control X, and you copy all the stuff of web EA into the root directory. And then the web EA directory is not needed anymore. Um, and there is an index.php, the HTML file you can also remove because you can be confused by getting the wrong one. So uh, I take in the, uh, this PHP file here. But the issue is that PHP is not configured on the server. So um, if I open localhost, um, so then uh, nothing will happen because it says hey, the listing of this directory is not allowed. And if I even try to open the file index.php, it will say, okay, this MIME type is not supported. So what is very important to configure um, the PHP stuff, and I will do this again below WW root, you can place PHP wherever you want, but my decision was to uh, take the non-thread safe Windows 32-bit uh, edition from PHP 7.1. It should work with 64-bits uh, too, but I'm not pretty sure and I, I have not tried out so far. So I will install PHP here if it makes sense or not, but I install PHP here, meaning I create a directory. Um, and security guys will get a thread of what I'm doing here. Um, however, uh, I install it here and then I extract everything that is in this PHP file into this directory. So it will take a while. And what you can do already is verify if PHP is con if, if it's installed correctly. So PHP has some um, C has some CGI, has a, C a PHP .exe. So if you want to verify if it's really working, then just go to the command prompt and uh, change to the correct directory. Um, and then PHP and you can start PHP right now just by opening it. The first thing that happens is that the Visual Studio runtime is missing. Um, yes, that's a typical behavior because by default the server installations do not have the runtime of Visual Studio. So the zip file is not required anymore, but in my software path and I have some hidden path here, I have prepared already um, I have prepared already some download. Here it is. Um, so this is also a required thing. So for the next presentation, I will be prepared. So I just installed the redistributable files from uh, Visual Studio, 32-bit in this case, um, version 14. It's a little bit downward compatible, but I try to take always the same the correct versions. So now I have installed the runtime and PHP as PHP should work. And this does nothing. But if you write php.info or something like that, then you get some info about the PHP configuration and the profiles and the data and so on. So PHP is running on this machine already.
And now I have to configure that PHP is also handled by the Internet Information Server. So I use Internet Information Server. So once again, it's not finding it. Why ever? Sometimes the index is not built fast enough. So it's under administrative tools. They will find Internet Information Service. And um, once again, I will do this on the server level. So there is the sites again, the application pools. And on server level, I can configure a handler mapping. In this case, a module is not required because CGI and uh, PHP is typically included as a CGI module. CGI is, uh, so CGI is already installed as a module and I just have to define the handler mapping uh, for the right uh, module. So I say for everything that handles PHP, use, and I use fast CGI module and name it PHP. No, very, not very creative. Define the restrictions I want to execute because I will start an exe there. Ah, the executable file is missing, of course. Um, the right directory is PHP and I use PHP exe, um, CGI.exe. Okay. Um, it's asking me um, if I'm really sure because I need the fast CGI also added. And so um, this is enabled now. Um, additionally, once again, you have to define the edit feature permission to execute why ever this is a two time thing, but um, it's, um, it's done like this, that you have after installation also to enable the PHP um, access rules. Yes, that's almost all folks, because now we have configured PHP as MIME type and oops, what's happening here? So it looks like that PHP is already working. It was really easy just adding the handler and the installation of PHP file, but Enterprise Architect is using some PHP features. And all the features from PHP are by default not configured to be used. So in the um, INET pub directory, we have um, the PHP again, but we have no pre-configured uh, configuration. So there is some preparation saying, okay, the, the deployment or the production. So we can try if, um, if this is already working. So I take the ini file for production and now it's having some additional features. I can say refresh, but once again, it's not activated. Um, development is not really recommended because it turns on all features. What I have prepared, and uh, on request I can publish it, I have prepared an indie configuration because it can okay, activate and be a string to lower, then it pops up the next issue, and so on and so on. Uh, but I have already prepared, prepared an indie file that is fitting to the needs of the web EA. And I just placed this indie file here. Um, don't overwrite the... production one yes and I copy my special PHP in here and if I activate refresh here it's still not working why ever so make a, um, it's not um, the funny story is sometimes if you configure the ini file and its caching is activated and sometimes it's necessary to uh, restart the server if you have changed configuration of the ini um, and so maybe this is a helper um, yes we have turned user security on so i have some security if i really want to get the site so and webba is running on that side now. Um, there is no model configured, so there is some uh, empty ones. Uh, maybe the Spark sample model will work, but uh, 
I'm not sure because they have some user IDs that are not activated. But um, this is just a sample of a configuration of WebEA as it is by default. So the next step, now it's running already. Um, so the next step is that you configure um, to use the, uh, the model that you have defined in the ProCloud scenario. So we have defined the South India Zero One um, server. And you see at the moment, the pro features are not activated. So it's not possible to connect this repository using WebEA because a thing is missing. And this thing that is missing that you have no license by default. And uh, therefore it's necessary to install the license before you can ex access it and to configure South India as a repository that you want to reach. First things first. So to activate a license, you have to get a license from Spark Systems. And I have one that is uh, valid till mid of May. Um, and then activate the license by just copying it into the Spark Services config file. So Spark Systems, Cloud Services, Services. And there is the SS Cloud Services config. And this can be opened and modified with a notepad. And here you have also some configuration for a server password, but the most important thing is copy the license here. And don't forget to add also the, the brackets around. So it's very important. What you also see here is the server ports uh, that are configured. 804 for HTTP, HTTP. 805 for HTTPS um, and if you require SSL for connecting. So this cloud server is now reconfigured. As every service, if you change configuration, you have to restart the service. So we go to the services and simple, say Spark Systems, professional cloud server, restart the service. So there's no difference to any other service. You have to restart it. And uh, the same is with this configuration client because he believes it's still a not existing configuration. So if you want to configure it, go to the client, connect to the server that is restarted now, and then we can see that this key is activated now. And so we can use OSLC interface for WebEA. Save. And now, depending on the configuration and the license you have, you have up to unlimited number of pro for, um, for the enterprise edition, up to five for the um, team server edition and up to three, four and only firewall repository, Firebird repositories for um, for the smallest small team edition. So now these features are activated. And so I am allowed to configure that WebEA accesses this repository South India because I'm not so good in typing things. You can just copy the name and um, we go back to the web configuration. It's in inetpub, wwroot, and here is the configuration. And in the includes directory, there is the configuration of WebEA. And just simple edit it. And here you see the list of the models. So if you watch out here, make it a little bit, oops. Then you see the names of the models are exactly the names provided here. In our case, we have only the South India model. So I just type in here my repository, South India, and maybe give a beauty name, South India repository. And um, there is some notes saying, maybe not here, but if you make a three here, so two is missing, then only um, Enterprise Architect, after I have stored the config, will stop after loading 
the second one. So I retry, I reopen the repository. Oh, okay, it's just jumping over because it's doubled. Uh, um, maybe it was just a interesting, interesting interpretation. However, don't care. We don't want to have these repositories, so we drop them. Um, if you want to, I think it was just in the configuration here, but um, it's a minor detail. So now I have just one repository uh, that is uh, South India repository. And the configuration stuff, I don't care at the moment. And how is the, the Sparks Cloud Services accessed? It's using localhost 804. And database alias is um, South India. Zero one, so meaning at the moment I'm not able to connect because it will say oh there is no defined repository, of course because the former name was model one, and now I place in the database name of the repository and I say save, and if I say next then automatically my South Indian repository will open here and I can navigate uh, through the model. Hey, where is my diagram? Uh, this is also a thing yet that you should know that Enterprise Architect with the a version higher than 13.5 has the capability to auto render on save um, this um, diagrams. So um, the only thing you has to configure is the options and say auto create diagrams and HTML pages and all the existing ones create once. So I have not that many, so it's really fast. So now we have generated, generated diagrams. And of course, if they are generated, then Enterprise Architect in the web can also show the diagrams. And you can navigate through the diagrams. So it's not only diagrams, it's also a map file. It is navigation information. Or oh, we have some uh, security issues because we try to get somewhere where it's not allowed. But uh, then we open the actor. You have here the possibility to edit, but um, my security configuration of the server side, Web EA does not allow to do too much, but um, you know, port 80 is already opened. So outside from the server, I can go back to Vienna and open my web browser here and say, okay, I want to go to my Indian one. So next time I will make a configuration for a DNS. But let's say HTTP at the moment. Just open that and port 80 is open. Then I have to give my credentials because I have defined a Windows uh, configuration. Okay. If you type in wrong, then you're not that lucky. So make it again. Oh, the, the issue is that I have to type in PHP. It's a, a small issue. Um, what I have done wrong, I will show later. And I can open the repository from, from my Vienna server, go through the model, the model, the use case model, go there, have the actors, and I have no restrictions for JavaScript. So can, if I'm allowed to, con to, to configure something, I can see the relations here. Uh, so as to target, I have uh, some nice features. Uh, WebEA is something like a combination between the browser of Enterprise Architect and the diagrams. So it's really a nice um, interactive thing. You can copy and uh, have a link. You can make a review. So. Later on, I will make a presentation of what, what the Web EA is providing itself. Um, the mini issue here was that um, index PHP was, ha I had to enter index PHP because I have not defined that PHP or index.php is a default, um, a default document for my website. And I can configure it here. Um, you can configure it also on the server lay. Um, and then we can add index.php and it's the first um, of course in this case now it's already up and running so i can leave it out 
because it's not expecting anything. It's just identifying, okay, index.php is the file to open. Um, and you see it's pretty fast. Um, the client is, in, client is in Vienna and the server is in India. Um, so it's really fast. You can navigate through. You have some uh, history on it. You have some inf additional information of elements. Uh, and you can, last but not least, you can go home in this case. And the rendering of the diagrams was a configuration of Enterprise Architect just to get it through. Um, thank you so far. If you like this, how the configuration of WebEA was done, it was more or less just in installing and configuring index.php. Uh, we identified that a doc default document handler is helpful if you don't want to type index.php into the um, into the address line. Then we identified that webea.config is the configuration point for accessing uh, databases that are defined by the Pro Cloud Server configuration. We identified that we need the Pro features for WebEA. Um, so we have uh, configured here this enable extended OSLC interface. OSLC will become another session. Um, how to interact with in the backend with Enterprise Architect. Um, again, the additional security levels I have not addressed at this, at this session. If you really like this video and you have seen uh, what is possible with Enterprise Architect and you really want to go forward, um, yes, like the video, share the video and give some feedback. Thank you very much.